Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I was doing some digging in my hard drives and I found some old footage of some old projects and I figured uh, this is probably something that a lot of you would be interested in seeing. So for the next couple weeks, potentially couple of months, depending on how much I compile and put out there, I filmed a project a few years ago with a object that most of you will know about. It is the 10 coiler Bendini. So this particular uh, system was made by Rick Frederick and uh, been out there and was in my shop and so I did a whole bunch of experimentation with it and uh, this video and the video series that you're going to be watching um, is actually my sort of personal reference videos documentation so I'm just going to publish them one at a time from the beginning to the end and this is like I'm showing you each part across the board along as we made progress, as we learn new things, as we talk to certain people about how things are supposed to work. So that's what this is and uh, that's what I'm going to show you. So enjoy the video and remember, remember this is a few years ago, but uh, this is what I learned and now's a good time to publish it. So enjoy. Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. So, this video is about this thing. So this thing showed up on my bench a couple weeks ago or more. And long story short, I'm going to do my best to test it the way it was intended to be tested. So, this video series is about this device, if you don't know what this device is, this is a 10, uh, ten coiler kit from Rich, uh, I'm sorry, from Rick Frederick, if I said his name right. And um, this is one of the early models. This is from 2010, so it's pretty old. Uh, I have completely rebuilt the entire thing, and I have reassembled it. And now I'm out to just test it, but I'm testing it the way it was intended to be tested. I haven't cleaned off my bench, so you'll have to just excuse the mess. Um, so at the moment, this is a documentation for myself, and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Uh, if you want to know how to do this right, go watch Rick's videos. Now, before we get too far, into this. I want everyone watching this to realize that this is a personal personal documentation of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm trying to understand how this system should work properly. And although most of us think we understand it, we really don't. And so my goal is to understand it for myself and uh, just fly in here and bring you along for the ride. So try to stay positive. Don't go into the comments and destroy this video uh, with negativity because I believe that it's possible to show something that hasn't been normally showed. It's not that it's not there, it's just normally it isn't shown in this manner. Uh, for instance, normally we have a run battery and a charge battery on a system like this and usually it's shown that they're usually the same voltage and they're usually the same battery and it's not very commonly shown a different way and there's other ways to do this and there's other processes to add to this and like I said if you go watch Rick's videos I'll link the playlist that that I have derived for you to watch I think um, Anyway, so this is a documentation of what I am doing for myself. I'm documenting, documenting it. I'm going to kill this fly. It's been here for two days. Um, eventually, I'll get it. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, this is just, this is, this is going to be like unedited, raw. Here's what I'm doing. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to explain to you what I've done and what I've learned so far in this process. Uh, so I've hooked the system up the way it was intended to be connected, but only with 12 volts, 
to test some ideas, play around with the system, understand it a little bit before I move on to the higher voltage. Uh, the end result will be 96 volts of run battery. That's pretty high power, or high voltage, I should say. I have these 35 amp hour batteries. I'll show you them closer in a minute. And I have some uh, 110 amp hour batteries over there, and I'll be using those. I have eight of each. They're brand new. And uh, I will be uh, hopefully showing you everything that I've learned so far. So when I got this system, um, it was run for some time in the past and done stuff and who knows what's been going on with this thing. So I took all the circuit boards completely apart and I rebuilt them and I did take apart the uh, transistors here on the, on the, I guess I should, I'll bring the camera over here so you can see why I talk about this, exactly what I did. I think that would be a wise choice, so let's move over. Okay, so here is the circuit boards. There are 10 of these, and there are eight circuits on each one. These coils that you see are bifiler wrapped. Um, there are eight windings in each one, eight, uh, eight filer. You can see it coming around the corners here. Um, and basically, this is the original SSG or SG circuit. I actually don't even know which one it is. Um, but it's a simple transistor being triggered and it uses the flyback energy or the collapsing EMF or some other process and it puts it back into the charge battery. So I'll, I'll explain that later. I just want to show you what I've done. So I rebuilt all these and I found somebody at one time used thermal compound paste that was silver and it was conductive and so all the transistors were shorting out against the back plate. So um, what I did is I rebuilt, uh, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There was like six cards that I completely rebuilt. Now one of them I found four bad transistors and I checked all the diodes, I checked all the transistors, I checked all the resistors, I checked everything to confirm it was correct and it's good. I did rewire all of this, so I've got the ground terminal here and the flyback terminal here, positive terminals on this, um, and each switch for each card. Um, so briefly, this one card has one wire missing, that's this wire right here, and this wire goes to a light bulb and a potentiometer and then you add some resistors in there to get it tuned right, and you adjust that to get it tuned for lowest amount of used power versus charge power going back to the battery and you balance that out. So that wire through one coil only, which is this guy, uh, you actually have that going back and that's what's triggering. So one of these switches is the trigger, this guy on this card, and then each one of these other switches are that trigger back to each one of these cards. So that way instead of using a trigger for each one of these, you can use those extra wires as flyback energy, or however you want to look at it. So uh, so that's how this is connected. I have some more thoughts I'll explain in a minute. Um, let's look at the, uh, the coils and the mechanical side. We'll go on the other side to do that. So here is, uh, here is the system. Um, so each one of these coils has rods inside of here, which are welding rods. Um, and then there, again, eight wires on each one of these coils wrapped, spiraled, and then wrapped around here. I did not, you know, again, wrap these. This was put together by someone else, but it was a kit when it was purchased. And, um, yeah, in general, um, this big flywheel spins, and there are magnets pressed in here, and they are north-facing out only. And you can see how, like, this coil is adjusted really close, and this one's adjusted way out, and these are way out. Um, trigger coil again is here. Uh, so the reason for the spacing here is when I was trying to tune this, I was trying to get the most uh, flyback energy, as I'm just going to express it that way, so the back EMF. I was trying to get that peak aligned on the oscilloscope, and it was moving around depending on where I moved these coils. I, uh, I should demonstrate that so you can see it. Um, actually, I'll just put some pictures up here you can see or grab a snippet from the live stream. Um, anyway, so that's why these are adjusted like this, and I've learned that 
you know, by adjusting these each right, you can get a different output alignment on each coil. Because since they're all driven by one coil, if these are out of alignment at all, which they should be perfect because they're machined and everything, but if the core, core material is different length or something's not quite right, you get a different result. So what I would like to do is trigger each one of these individually and isolate them all so I can really get a good, nice feedback. Because it does help. It does really produce a difference on the output. But that's for another time. Right now it's just testing this as it is. All right, so as far as my uh, test equipment goes, I'm just using these clamp-on amp meters. Um, I'm not too concerned about measurements. I'm just using it as a reference to get a feel for what the system is doing. Um, I do have one of these little, little meters, um, and it is a shunt meter, and I really, I really should use a current transformer like this guy. So these are, these are the same ones that my buddy had who came and we made a video about this um, as of the recording this video I haven't published exactly that one yet but I did get two of these they're actually fairly inexpensive considering what they what they can do and I think I can capture what's going on better with these because these other clamp meters I don't think are quite as fast these will go up to a lot higher frequency so the response time is quicker so hopefully we can look at things a little better but I got to order some cables at at this moment, I haven't done that. Um, so I've I've learned. Well, we'll get to that in a second. So I'm using the oscilloscope here. These are all isolated channels, completely isolated, and um, it's a Tektronix TPS 2024B. Uh, the clamp meters are an SL261. These will do up to 100 kilohertz, uh, from DC to 100 kilohertz, up to 100 amps. Um, so what else can I talk about? Uh, right now with only 12 volts, I don't even need any extra resistors in the trigger line. Um, I think that's what I've learned. So I run, let me move the camera back, I guess, and I'll talk about this a little more. I'll show you the other batteries too, real quick. So here are the 100 amp hour. No, I thought they were 110. They're 100 amp hour, 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries. There's eight of them there and I will be doing testing with these. The other batteries here are PowerSonic and um, they are 35 amp hour batteries and there are eight of them there. I have a 96 volt battery charger so I can play around with charging a whole bank if I'd wish. Um, and yeah, some big giant cables to work with and go from there. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is just conclude some of my thoughts. Uh, first of all, I'm trying to experiment with this with no bias input. I am just experimenting with it. Um, interestingly enough, oh, I guess 11 years now or something, 10, 11 years, a long time. The very first project I ever built was a small, standard, six-filer Bendini SSG. Um, and I still have it. It's up here in a box, but I haven't used it. I should probably get it back out and play with it separately from this system so I can have two of them running. Um, but basically, what I've learned so far is I've had two 35 amp hour batteries here. And I've run both of them back and forth, back and forth. Right now they're connected in parallel. I'm going to use these as a 24 bank next. But this is just the, the standard two batteries in, in series. Uh, the center tap is your positive. The charge uh, battery is the flyback. You hook the, the positive there. And then, you know, positive, negative, positive, negative. And then here you just run this to your uh, transistors. I guess that would be what? Yeah, I don't want to look at it right now. Anyway, uh, I'm mumbling. But what, I, what I've learned is that I've been able to recover the energy put into the system into the charge battery. Now, as we 
all have experimented with this for many years. A lot of you out there are probably going, uh, but the point is, is that I'm trying to work with this system differently than most people do. There are other people who have worked with this system and other systems like it, like I'm going to work with this system. Uh, but for now, like I said, this is a documentation of what I've done. So 12 volt, 12 volt, 35 amp hour batteries. I've run these four cycles. Okay. So I, st I actually started out with a fully charged battery on both of these. And um, I started this out documenting this not uh, in this manner. So I'm just going to throw some random numbers at you. Um, so I ran it once and I depleted one of the batteries down to about 12.03 and I charged one of the batteries up to about 13.24. Okay. Um, I let them sit overnight. Uh, the total voltage there at that time frame, I don't remember if that was at rest, I think that was running. So I had 25.26 volts across the battery pack. And then the next day I came in and after they spent sitting 24 hours, the voltage was at 12.14 on the run battery and 13.05 on the charge battery. Total voltage was 25.18. Uh, and then I ran them for a whole day and I let them sit over the weekend and I had flipped the two batteries and I ended up with 12.2 volts in the run battery and uh, in 12.25 volt, I'm sorry, 12.52 volts in the charge battery and that resulted in a total voltage of 24.17. So you can see I, I slowly decreased in total voltage, but I started with two fully charged batteries, so it doesn't really count. Um, but I'm just throwing these numbers out there so you ha I have a reference. Uh, so I ran this thing four cycles, and I ended up with a total voltage of 24.26, 11.88 in one, 12.73 in the other. And then I connected those two batteries in parallel because that is how I'm going to be operating this system next and I'll take a little bit better notes. Um, when I first got this system running I was just playing with it and trying to tune it and trying to understand what was happening here. So I think that's most of my notes. The most important thing I learned is that uh, you, if you tune it right you can recover a tremendous amount of power. So if I were to hook this battery up to this system and run it I could only run it for four to five hours and this battery would be dead, um, depending on how, how much current I'm pulling. Um, so it would be like 11.8 volts and that's it and, it's, and it would be dead. But by adding a second battery, I've been able to recover quite a bit of that energy to charge another battery. And obviously this is the whole entire purpose of this system, is to do exactly that. But there's more to it, that's what I'm going to be exploring. Uh, so, yeah, all common knowledge here, stuff that we've all played with in the past, thought about, should understand most of the principles here, but there's more to it than that, and that's the point of making these videos. So for those of you who actually stuck around through this, blah, 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 um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be learning together. Um, I'm not going to go into any details here, um, but what I have learned is thick, thick wire is very important because the resistance of this short piece of wire from here to here has a voltage drop of the flyback side of like 10 volts. So this is a uh, zero gauge wire. And I've had to actually strip the shielding off to get my clamp meters on here. And just measuring from here to here, this is maybe a foot or a little bit longer, gives me a huge voltage drop. So you can't put anything in the line and try to measure current. If you're going to measure current, you better put a clamp meter on here. Um, and the input side, uh, I put smaller wires on here. These are four gauge. Yeah, four gauge wire, I believe. And I'm actually learning I should probably put 
one aught or, or one gauge on here as well. Uh, because it's also, it's also, you can actually measure a spike coming back on the positive side, coming from here, going to this side of the batteries, uh, which is not normally where you're looking for things, you're looking for it from the flyback side, but actually it goes the other way as well. And it does throw back a voltage spike into the primary battery. And these cables, this, this resistance has a huge, you know, effect on that. Um, I do right now have a shunt, so this little meter that I'm using, this is just reference to kind of get an idea of what's going on, just an extra measurement somewhere. Right now it is a shunt, and I suspect I should use a current transformer. It is a really big shunt. It's the equivalent of this 4-gauge wire. It'll handle uh, 100 amps at 120 volts, so that's a lot of power. But it is still a shunt, and it is still a resistance, and I should remove it from the line. So I'll be, I'll be working on getting a uh, current transformer for this model. This is just a cheapy unit. It doesn't even have a... Actually, it does have a model number on it. Uh, it is a, a VAC10, or a VAC-1100A. Oops, if I throw it on the ground. Um, made by D-R-O-K-I-N-G, Droking, SKU number 200193. And actually, this is a cool little meter, but I need to get one with a uh, current transformer. I thought a shunt would be better, but I didn't realize that... I didn't realize when I got these that the, that the resistance was going to cause this much problem. So, there it is. That's what I'm going to leave you with, and I'll let you know whenever I get to the next phase and I'll try to explain things better but if you want to know and I, I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of feedback <laughs> positive or negative I don't know yet but if you really want to know what I'm trying to achieve here go watch Rick Frederick's videos I will leave a link in the description to a playlist of particular videos that I picked out in order to try to help you understand what I'm trying to do here which is not what you think it is. So we'll see. That's my goal. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, you like this type of stuff, let me know. I realize these are long uncut videos and I'm doing that to just make this easy for me to document what I'm doing. I have been live streaming all of this and those videos I will put in a playlist if you really want to watch them and you can see exactly what I'm thinking, what I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve because those videos are really my personal documentation of this live, which again, you have to skim through it all to find anything worthwhile. So that's why I'm making this video of what I've learned. Um, so I'm gonna hook up 12 to 24 volts now. I'm sorry, 24 to 12 parallel series. You'll see that later. Um, yeah, so right now this is exactly the way it was intended to work. I haven't changed anything. And now I'm gonna start doing things according to what Rick is trying to explain in his videos. All right. God bless. Have a good day. Um, yeah. I could go into a lot of different thoughts right now, but I'm just going to just ignore those thoughts because I don't want to ramble on and bore you guys. But um, Yeah, I think that's good for this video because right now I'm doing conventional standard knowledge of what this system was originally intended to be connected according to the documents given with it. And now we're going to do something different. See you in the next one. Okay, my first setup of a third stage process. I've got six batteries. These two here are in parallel. I'll show you the circuit in a minute. Charging, so these two are 12 volts charging via the discharge of these two batteries in series, which is 24 volts charging into 12 volts. So I'm using the difference between that loop. Okay, so the uh, positive of the motor is connected to the positive of these 24 volts. The negative of the motor is, is attached to the positive of this 12 volt bank 
and then the ground is connected together here. These are just so I can put my amp probe around there. Um, I did a lot of other things on the live stream so I can reference that data on the scope and stuff. And then those batteries are my charge batteries. Now they were already pretty well charged so I'm just sort of topping them off. And there are two batteries connected in uh, series. No, sorry, parallel for 12 volt charging. 35 amp hour batteries. Um, I got a giga switch, big switch on there. Should have like no resistance. And then I've got a fuse over there, 96 volt fuse, so it should be pretty low resistance as well. Tons of meters on this thing. Now this is the motor voltage. So what's across the differential? Uh, B is the charging of the two batteries in parallel. A is the discharge batteries in uh, a series. Uh, the Kenlin meter is the negative charge batteries. So these are the negative charge batteries. These are the positively charged batteries through that loop through the motor. And then here we've got the uh, bump this live camera. Here we've got the meter doing its thing. Um, I don't know if I trust that meter. It's more of a reference point than anything. And it's connected to this little box here. That's a pretty beefy shunt. I don't expect that to cause too many problems, but I like to get a current transformer. I do not have the plugs for these. I'm going to order those today. Current probe. I can show you what the uh, flyback spike looks like. So, uh, yeah, I referenced that data later on the uh, live stream, but the yellow probe, the yellow trace is connected actually to the back side of the coils, all right, and the ground, right, so basically it's connected across that differential, so between that positive and this positive, which is about 12 volt. And it actually has a, a 42 volt peak to peak. Um, if we measure it with the cursor real quick, because it's a little easier to just get those peaks. Uh, there. All right, so it's about a 34 volt peak, positive peak coming backwards, basically, or the difference between there. So that positive peak is going back into these batteries, which is kind of interesting. The run batteries, the differential between the run battery and the positively charged battery gets confusing fast. And then the purple trace is uh, here, and it is connected basically. Is it even connected? Sort of. Get it on that. There we go. It's basically connected between, like, across the uh, negatively charged battery pack and it's it's pretty small um, we can measure it measuring it right across the battery really dampens the spike that's about six volts if I move the ground lead right to the ground of the whoop, the ground of the system things change dramatically. So now you can see it's like way up there. I mean it's actually about a 34 volt peak. 35 volt peak. But I like measuring here just because. No real reason. So yeah, um, it's been running for well, whatever this is, about a half an hour. So I'm comfortably able to run this down to about 23.6 volts, which is the run batteries in series. And uh, yeah, I gotta watch the charge battery because those batteries were charged when I started. So these are just reference points, but it is running. Um, this is considered a third third stage process, according to the diagram here on Rick's paper. All right, self-destructive death systems or Sensitive key to rejuvenative infinite grace. I want to unlock the box. Thanks, Rick. 
So I do not have this zero voltage process on here. I think I know how to apply this properly, but I'm not going to do it yet. I just want to see what happens the way we're running it now for some cycles. And uh, yeah, just a quick update. It's a bit of a mess, but uh, yeah, happily running away. All right, so if you like that, um, you know, there's going to be quite a few more of these videos coming. Um, and I'm just going to publish them as I recorded them. There's no fancy cutting or editing. I'm just going to put them out there as I recorded them as documentation for uh, everybody who would like to see more about this device. So um, stick around and learn with me as I learn. Like I said, I, I, I really learned a lot as I progressed through this entire experience. And then when we get to the very end, I'll give you my full conclusion. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. God bless. Read the Bible more. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.